I wouldn't say I left City under a cloud or anything like that. It was just a difficult time. Um, I was really struggling with the way the club was at the time because I was so invested in the club, you know, from being a baby, really, from being a six, seven, and, you know, certainly from, you know, um, you know, from being at Wembley in 76, I, you know, I was a, you know, I was a kid. And I was, I'd was i been a fan from that day and then I was a player and I, I thought the whole the whole place was in a, in a mess. And, I, and, and um, so when I left the club, I, I definitely got I, 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 quite an extensive period of time where I fell out of love with the football club. Um, and be, because I knew, I, I could see where it was going, I knew where it was going. And we, so from being... Um, I think 91, 91, 92, we finished fifth. It was 20 years before we finished fifth again. 20 years. And I knew, see, I was right in the middle of it. I was more than anybody. Um, probably me and Wrighty were more than anybody in the middle of that, of that storm, if you like. And then you've got to um, kind of take a view on your own professional position as well. And, and, so I went to Leeds, and then you then you're a Leeds person, aren't you? You know, as much as I was still, I, when I went to Leeds, I, I, I did stop being kind of City fan. It, it's really, really difficult, probably, for City fans to hear that. But I've got to sit here and be honest. It, it was um, so you, you have to then commit yourself to another football club, and you can't pick and choose which football club you go to. You know. It could have been Aston Villa, it could have been Blackburn. It, you know, at the time, there were there were other, not I wouldn't say options that were necessarily put to me, but certainly options I'd kind of read about. And, and so Leeds probably wasn't preferable in terms of um, Yorkshire rival, but you go there and suddenly, and then you're a, you stop being, I guess you stop being a fan, you're just then professional and you're, you're a, you know, you're a Leeds footballer. Um, I'd have to say when I went to Leeds, the whole thing immediately felt a lot more professional. Everything about Leeds at that time felt a lot more professional than than Man City did, um, and you know therein were were the issues at, at Main Road, if you like. Um, I spoke the other night of the do, and you know I left this with ninety six goals. I'm not even sure you. I'm not even sure I knew. Um, and obviously, I'm sat here now, scored 96 and not scored 100. And it, it's not a day goes by where I, I don't hate myself for it. I, I, because, you know, it, it's who have scored 100 goals for, you know, the, the club I absolutely love. And, 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 and you know, I've, you know, I, I, be only a few behind Dennis, and, and is I, I, I generally generally find it madness that I, I did that, but that was where I was, you know, at, at that time in my life. It was, um, and, and it, you and it cut yourself some slack there, David. You're you're a professional. You were trying to do the best. For no, yourself. no, no. But it's I, not I, the same as just being a fan. We can we can all say, oh, David White, you should have stayed at City and scored a hundred goals. That's easy for us because we're we're just in the stands wanting to see you in a blue shirt. But you've got to. You've got to do your best as a professional. It's not. It's not the same. Uh, it's not the same outlook from a fan as from a, from a professional player. No, say. no, I, know, I understand that. I mean, I, mean, I appreciate, it, but I'm, I think it, I, I find it important when I go to these events that I tell people, you know, that how much that, and um, I'm, I'm, you know, tell you that I was quite. When I said that in front of 150 people, I, I get quite emotional because it does. I do find it, and that's how because that's how important it is. But you get these periods. That you, uh, when you're a city fan and you, you don't have the the experience of being a player and, and it's a completely different thing than when you're a player, it's you, you're you're uh, you're involved in a completely different set of circumstances. And and certainly as a as a fan, and then you're a player, um it it, it is it becomes completely different. The, the the dynamics with you, you know, your family who are coming to watch you play, you know, and, and suddenly your 
you're right in the middle of, and, and it, it's the whole thing becomes completely different your emotions are, are completely different but I just think it's important that I say to people that uh, the the fact that I didn't the fact that I I'm, I haven't got 100 goals behind my name I'm, I'm, I'm amazingly proud that it's 96 but if it was three figures it would just be for me it'd be unbelievable you know you look at um, like say the like said, Dennis and, and Colin. Colin scored, I think, in 58. But uh, it's, it, it, it would have been massive for me. And I, and I can't believe the emotional place I must have been in in 93 to have made that decision. It's very I, well I, documented what you've been through, David. And yeah. uh, well, you know, you, you've had a lot of things to juggle in your life, haven't you? Well, yeah, but it, it's uh, even so at that moment in time, I don't think any of that had anything to do with that. It, it was just vision at that yeah, moment. Can I tell you one extra thing there? Just, just as, a, as a fact from a fan's perspective, David, I'll tell you when you played for England, I felt, me personally, I felt a sense of, a sense of pride uh -huh. that you play for uh -huh. England. You're one, of our, you're one of our boys in a way that, you know, let's say Foden, I mean, let's say Jack Grealish or something, if England go on and win the World Cup and he wins the World Cup, I'd be pleased for him. But I won't feel uh, a personal sense of city pride like yeah, I did yeah. when you play for England for the first player we'd had in God twenty years or something maybe I don't know. But that that meant more to me than than any uh, you know non non city fan non Mancunian city city player playing for England does nowadays. So that's no, why that, and that's lovely for you saying I appreciate it. But uh, it's, um, Ian asked me a question at the do the other the day was just. Um, you know what? What are your special memories? And, and they're easy to. And, and I, my my special memories were, were every progression, every every debut I made. Um, and, it, and people say, "How oh, do you remember that?" And I, I remember it. It's all bloody important to me. And, and that, and I can't sum it up any more than that. I, I, I remember it because it. Yeah, and the only the one thing I didn't say, you know, the you know the day as a Ten-year-old or eleven-year-old kid, I'm told if the team associated with City want you to play for them. If they, you know, despite the where that message came from and the person, the horrible person that message came from, it's the, it's the most important thing. It's the, you know, when you get a moment in your life where your body's just, oh my god, I can't believe this. That was, you know, to be told an eleven-year-old kid, Man City's. Unity in one, one place for me is absolutely magical. Um, and, it, and it's it's then just amazing, the, you know, the other night, just is realise when you're playing, I don't think, how, how important football is to you guys and, and to the the fans. And then you think, oh, well, that's what it was like for me. That's what it was like for me. And you going to Wembley in 76 and go, going to um Goody Cern and Villa Park and Wembley in, in 81 and, and all those special moments in Trevor Francis and Gary Gow and Bobby McDonald and Tommy Hutchinson and, and all, you know, it, it was absolutely magical. And then when you're playing, you kind of, you it's easy to forget all of that. Um, but absolutely amazing when you go back and, and uh, I went over to Ireland um Probably three or four months ago, to to the sports club over there. Um, went to a in a hotel, and, I, and the dude was a, I hadn't met anybody. The dude was say half seven, um, and I went into the bar about twenty past seven. The bloke came to me, and he said, um, "He said you're my, you're my favourite player ever." And I thought, "This is madness!" You <laughs> like David Silver's playing for City. Where was play for City? Who's in company's place? I don't care. I said, you, you, it's you. And then the next guy came and he said the same thing. And I thought, is something wiping me up here? But it's a moment in time, I think, you know, you, you have your favourite players when you're at a, a certain age. And and and, um, and it's and it's right. The, the homegrown players, I think they do mean more. They probably take a bit more grief. The club probably use them a, a bit more than they should. But where, when you can bring the player through, um, and that player can have success, 
it, it, it is a pretty beautiful thing. And, and at the minute with um, with Phil Foden, oh my God, we, you know this this guy can be the best player in the world without any any doubt. Not far off already. 